Hello and welcome back to MLB The Show 18 and the Jason Parham Road to the Show. I'm Tyrant Saber. Last time out, Jason put out another appearance against the Oakland Athletics in home. Pitched for seven innings, allowed seven hits, but no runs. Collected only four strikeouts, but got the win. So let's go back out there and take another look. Looks like we are going to have our next outing is going to be against the Chicago White Sox before the... Uh, eh, we get, I guess we'll have two more games, but our next one is going to be against the White Sox, so let's get out there and get it. Bullpen day. What do we have? What can we do? There's stuff and things and all kinds of things and stuff. All good. Uh, throwing long? Um, sure. Let's put a little more salt and pepper on that two seamer. Get it all fired up. Okay, so Jason is going out there once again against the Chicago White Sox. Now, this will be Jason's second appearance against the White Sox. He has gone 2-0 against them, has a career 188 ERA and a .217 Woba. So, pretty good historical numbers, but again, these are guys that we haven't faced off a heck of a lot, so better not to uh, get too careless against them. So, let's just get out there and get it. Time for baseball now on the show as we give you a look inside Guaranteed Rate Field in Chicago. Today, game three of this four-game series between the Boston Red Sox and the Chicago White Sox. White Sox baseball starts right now. Chris Castro gets the ball for the White Sox in this one. Dan Plezak, what do you got? Hey, in this day and age where we're all into numbers and statistics, look at this whip, 1.10 or less. He has a sub 1.1. That's not an easy thing to do, especially in today's game where we see teams scoring a lot of runs. He doesn't walk very many guys, and he doesn't give up that many hits either. This is a real good pitcher and should be fun to watch pitch in this one. Okay, Kenji Aoki first up to the plate. Sends that one uh, out Jason play, hangs strike strike a slider that well, he almost cranks out of here, I'm thinking. They're definitely in a nice stretch as they've won six of their last seven ball games. Yeah, Matty, I'm, I, I've been really impressed with this team, especially on the recent road trip to start to it. They're three and one after four games, playing really fundamentally one, one, one. Well, from offense to defense. Nice little bunt outside. Any bunt is nice when it doesn't result in a base hit or a run. The wind up and the 0-2 pitch. Line hard to center Line field. shot to center field and Kenji and Aoki opens up the game hit. for the White Sox with a base hit. No mistake what he was sitting on. Fastball middle of the plate, kept his hands back, stayed through the baseball, and delivers a hard hit line drive. Well, as they say in San Diego, there goes that no-hitter. Up next for Chicago, Rex Benitez. He did not play last night, but clearly back in the starting nine for this one. Anyway, what I was about to say was Boston scores nothing in the top of the first, so we come out here to New Comiskey. I mean, guaranteed rate field. He's set and the pitch. Swing, Swing and a miss on a fastball. Behind the big fastball. Really starting to pour now, and the forecast is not showing any signs of a break in the weather. Total agreement, Matt, in particular that pitcher's mound. You know, one of the things you have to really be careful, not just for the position players, but that mound gets awfully slippery and awfully wet when it becomes moist like it is right now. So the umpires are going to have to really pay attention to the conditions on the field. And set up behind the dish is Clyde Washington as you see the rest of our Keep him honest over there, there at first. You know, Dero, he is a pitcher's best friend, Clyde Washington. Down in the strike zone, he'll definitely call that ball right at the knees. If he's consistent with it, Dan, which Clyde always is, I'm okay with it. Mm okay, right on the black, the no ball. such luck. Sometimes it can be difficult for a pitcher. You're facing a guy that's not known to be a big stick in the lineup. Sometimes the yeah, toughest yeah, thing yeah, is to be yeah, aggressive and throw strikes. The 2-1 home. My problem is not that I'm not trying to throw strikes. My problem is just that I don't want to give them the meatball. Yeah, and they set him up with that curveball on the pitch before, and that one, they just blew right by him. And they could go either way now, I suppose. Here now with the fastball high outside, swinging a miss on one well out of the zone. 
And he goes down swinging. Have a seat and get comfortable. Lineup in this one. Who are you focused on, Dan Plezak? You know, I'm really impressed with Joanne Moncada. We all know he's just a great baseball player. He's one of the elite players in the game, and it's always a privilege to see him do his thing. Hopefully, he does just that in this one. Ready now for the White Sox. Joan Moncada, you'll get to take his first cuts here. Joan Moncada. That's it, huh? Go with a cutter low out inside. And that pitch catches the inside corner. This is a tough spot here to turn two off this guy at the plate. One of the things you really have to make sure defensively to make sure you get at least one out. Don't try to turn that double play. If you get the sure out at second, take that. And if you get it at first, well, that's just an added bonus. But make sure you at least get one out in a spot like this. And, he and slide step didn't really help me out there. Sorry if that was a little bit janky for you. But uh, trying to keep this guy from stealing on me. He's set. Here comes the one-one. Swing and a miss on a high fastball. Outclassed by that fastball for a strike. If you're going to catch up to a high fastball like that, it's all about getting that front foot down in enough time to allow your hands to start moving forward. He was way too late there. All right, come on now, one time, get a piece. Little tapper over to second base, lobs it to short, to first, double play, not bad. Tsue Lin, DJ LeMahieu, Jose Abreu, I'm starting to say these names quite a bit. And once again, we got the outfield of rookies Gustavo Marquez, Barney Saltzman, and Eric Abbott out there. And that'll bring up the shortstop, Tim Anderson. As you get a look at his current righty-lefty splits entering play in this one. Obviously, we would much rather have the team of uh, Andrew Benintendi, Jack, Jackie Bradley Jr., and uh, uh, um, J.D. Martinez out there. But... We just got to rely on what we have. And you know, the heavy stuff has finally arrived. This has got to be the hardest rain we've seen all afternoon. Okay, so good release on that. No swing. We'll go with a high fastball this time, I think. Get your pitch, huh? Nothing in one count. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. Stepping out of the zone, a swing and a miss. Hey, I get it. You're all in fastball. You're pulling the trigger at almost anything. But that is way too high. He's going to have to lower his sights. Okay. So, call is now for a curveball out of the zone. Which, I like that call. Not fond of that pitch. That bounced right off the plate. One and two. Tried to get him to chase that 0-2 curveball there. you know. He wasn't biting. Very well could see it again here, though. Served its purpose. Gets him and catches him looking there. All right, let's take a quick look at on the changeup. And let's focus our attention on first baseman Jose Abreu. We know the bat plays, the ability to drive the ball out opposite field, no problem. But I don't think people realize how soft this guy's hands are at first base, constantly bailing his other infielders out. Coming to the yeah, I've been pretty impressed with Jose Abreu as a uh, player for our Boston Red Sox defensively anyway. Haven't taken a look at his offensive production because I haven't had occasion to. And once again, Jose Abreu showing his glove out there. Making the nice play, putting out Omar, uh, Omar Narvaez, I think it is. On one Next pitch, up is the sneaky pop of Nicky Delmonico. Okay, calling for outside fastball two seam. Ready to deliver. Go ahead and throw it. Pitch. A high fastball. And that is catches. In there. Well, it's really the top of the zone. Doesn't catch any corners, but I'm relatively satisfied with the spot. Now for another one on the inside. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. 
That is right past Rafael Devers, goes to the wall. Nicky Delmonico gets himself a nice little double. Not in time, and he's in there with a double. There's no question. Sneaky pop indeed. They're trying to do anything to get himself going, so he's got to feel pretty good after that double. Not to take anything away from him, but I think I could have probably hit that pitch. Yeah, that's one of those gift pitches, not the location he was shooting for. Next will be the designated hitter, Jordan Luplo, runner in school. Yeah, that one snuck a little bit too far back to the center of the plate, so that's on me. First pitch of the at-bat. Takes a fastball on the inside corner. But, you know, Jason is out here doing his thing. From the stretch. And he misses hmm. one and one. That one was on the black, but I didn't get any credit for it. Too much off the plate, but now that sets him up to work with something away and maybe even an off speed pitch. Pitch sharply toward the And that one is sharp hit to right field. That's going to be another double, and Nicky Delmonico is going to come home on the run. So Jordan Luplo drives one home on that nice little double. Well done. Well, he was almost out of the it's one nothing Chicago on top. You can't lose focus on the mound. It's the first run Jason's allowed for a couple couple games. Shows you just how quickly things can get away from him. Romero. Stepping in now, Ray Ramiro. Okay, cutter low outside, and Ray Ramiro starts swinging at it. I'm here to pick up that runner from second with two away. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Curveball falls away, no help there. I like that they went away with that pitch right there. They really tried to tie him up on that previous pitch, so he was probably... What and he was early on that slider, conscious. which is he just as well, because he knocked it pretty far. He was looking for another ball in. So, situation being what it is, let's go with a little showtime. Put that change up outside corner. Swing and a miss, and that'll end the inning. So a run on two hits, no errors, and a man left. We play two full, and the White Sox are out in front, one to nothing. Stepping up now, Will Eubanks. And as you check out his righty-lefty splits, no surprise that he hits better against southpaws than he does against right-handers. Okay, Boston does not answer in the bottom or the top of the third, so it remains one nothing Chicago. He's ready. Here's the first offering. One, one, one. On the ground to first. Taken in by and Jose Abreu, and one pitch, on one out. For the out. And with one gone, time for a check of the standings to see where the Red Sox place in the American League. East. So Toronto has fallen a couple games behind, so if we drop this one, it's not going to ruin us. But uh, certainly we would like again. to catch as many Bale wins as we can while we still can. First try. Haven't been tracking how good Chicago has been doing. Ready with the first so I'm not sure if come. they are favorites to win this one necessarily, uh, but you right got to expect for a strike. that with Jason wow, on the mound, right that's uh, would like to have back. Very rarely do you see a picture of this. Got to be some kind of equalizing right factor. Swing and a miss on the slider that away. Like to have that and that's 0 and 2. To take a good hack at that pitch. He was early on that, and the call is for another slider. This one I think I'm going to put outside the zone. All right, come on now, one time. Let's Try not to throw it wild. Oh, Swing and a miss, and same miss. spot. Kenji Aoki goes down on two. strikes. Well, we'll Have a seat, sir, and get comfortable. The discussion at this point in the season, it's pretty hard to argue against it when you watch him dominate a guy on three pitches and send him packing without much problem. Now battle, third baseman, Rex Lead off, I think, with a change up here. In now, Rex Benitez. Oh, that one damn near hit Jason again, and that's a drive to center field. So once again, we got a two-out single to put a man on base. Recognition right there. OO changeups usually get guys out in front, but he was able to stay back, recognize it, and drive it for a base hit. Yeah, that one almost took Jason's head off. Assuming he didn't cushion it with that fabulous hair of his. The batter, number 10, second baseman. 
Next to bat will be the Cuban import, Yohan Moncada. And that's a pop-up can. No, nobody and can get to it. So, for one for foul ground pop-up. Had the potential, but nobody could get to it. So it's one up, nothing and one. Made a hash of that. It's a zero one count. Takes a pitch high and away for 96 one. mile an hour fastball just outside the, so the corner. Because he's got that big hole on the right side of the infield to worry about with the first baseman holding the runner on. It's always smart to pitch into the defense you have behind you. Cutter, low part of the zone. Sees him twitch, but not swing. But it was a called strike anyway. Okay, take a rip like you can. Here you go, baby. Swing and a miss, reaching for that changeup, and that will end the inning. A man left for the White Sox, but they're on top one to nothing. They're hungry for hits, but that also makes them greedy. That also makes them vulnerable. And now here's the cleanup hitter for the White Sox, Tim Anderson. He'll lead things off here in this one-run contest. <laughs> now Boston still stymied by the uh, Chicago defense and pitching. Here comes so it's still a one-nothing game going into the bottom of the fourth. Takes a look at a slider, slider hung a little bit, corner. but still catching the inside corner for a strike. Swing and a miss on a way low circle change. Just hang on to your bat, man. It's bad weather to let go of it. A wind up and the 0-2 pitch. I can't remember if we've seen it in this game. Oh, strike out looking. Change the channel, sir. Time now for the Red Sox Road to the Show report as we get a look at two guys making some noise in the upper <laughs> minors. I can't remember what I was saying. I apologize. Stepping up to the plate, Omar Narvaez. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. Now the pitch. Oh, that one's right off Jason. Down near the foot or the ankle. Safe back to the Oh, and Jason couldn't make the play from the relay from Jose Abreu, unfortunately. It's right off the ankle, it looked like. Oh, right off the side of the foot. That's not too bad. From step one, but I have to ask you, Dad, how frustrating executing Oh, man, Jason must have just missed him on the reach. That's a shame. You know that that ball is going to be hit on the ground, and you're thinking deep down inside, okay, there's a quick out. Okay, well, that's fine. Into the box, Nicky. Delmonico. Nicky Delmonico now back on the on the plate, having knocked a double in his last plate appearance. With one away. Don't have much on him. That's this is only his fourth plate appearance against Jason, but he's got a two. Uh, yeah, he's got a one and four uh, at um, batting average, a two fifty batting average. Bouncer up That's middle. another one straight up the and middle, nearly taking Jason base. out. He'll make it two for two so, in this one. Delmonico, two for two in this one, and There's now the White Sox have got some more action going. To get a glove on it, hard single. Yeah, he's 500. Watch your lips right there, Dad. Sent it back right where it came from. I think Jason needs to have one of them pitcher screens up so that he doesn't get nailed. Here we go. Find your pitch right here. Jordan. Into the box now, Jordan Luplo. Okay. It's a cold strike at the knees. It's 0-1. One. one for one as he reached base with a double his first time up. Now, one of the things, one of the oddities I'll note, because this is uh, something I haven't done a whole lot of recently. Fly ball out toward left center field. Can of corn. Out into left field, and that's going to get over to third base, holding the runners on first and second. Mr. Gustavo Marquez out there in left field, making a nice play. Stepping into the box, Ray Romero. Two men on, two away here in the fourth. Ray Romero. Here we go, let her fly here. From the stretch. 
And a change up right change down up the down the middle and no swing. And he pulls the fastball a little early on it. So I think maybe inside slider, perhaps? Or maybe just one on the corner. I got plenty of showtime left. Down the first baseline. Bouncer. Uh, this will wind up foul. Still no, nope, it's going to be foul. So how about one going away? The next 0-2. Up Reaches line, for it. But it gets foul. Another foul ball. If this pitcher tries to go a little bit further outside the zone, three foul balls in a row. He wants to get a swing and a miss on this next pitch. The next I'll take whatever I get as this long as it's ooh. One. So holds up just in time apparently. Right isn't necessarily to get a swinging strike. If you get it, well, hey, that's great. But if you get it inside enough, let's try another. Showtime. Swing and a little tapper. Hmm. Foul, so he stays Ray line. Ramiro. Two men are on with two men out. What first appearance I think that this guy has had against me. His first game against me anyway. Straight up, straight up, Popped him up. up. Pop up straight up. Left. No right there for Blake Swihart to cal over. calmly so and coolly collect. And that'll no hold him scoreless once again. Stranded. On to the top of ending number five we go. But where is the Boston offense today? My goodness. Now in the box, Will Eubanks comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. Oh, there it is. They had to go find the bats. Go back to the bus, find the bats. Here's the pitch. So now we are up 2 to 1, bottom of the fifth. Called strike over the outside part of the plate. Will Eubanks on the plate. Jason Parham throwing fire on the mound. Oof. To the right side. Nice hit on a slider that was left hanging. But he wasn't able to hold back, or he was just a little late on it. So, here we go. Hey, we got no into the windup. Here comes Let's the try it again. Ooh, woo -hoo. Just misses. two seamer that very oh, nearly pitch. clipped that corner. Two fastball just off the corner, and I mean just off the corner. The one Try now the curveball. And easy. that's a called strike. Three. Well, it's still early. Will you banks out of here? That he'd be in line for the win if this keeps up as we take a look at the league leaders in games won this season. And as you can see, he's right up there, fourth in the AL in that category. Yeah, it's still a tight race so among all the leading now, AL pitchers right now. Shohei Otani, Luis Severino. Um, did I see Clyde Lavallo, or was that... First pitch of the at-bat. Was that... Um, Here's a swing and a ground ball. Oh, what's his name? Uh, this Rick. is foul for the first strike. One run Can't think of it right now. And no errors so far for the White Sox. Here we go. A little grounder over to Rafael Devers, pulls it in, and there is uh, Mr. Jose Abreu to yank it in. Corey Kluber is the name I was looking for. Leaders in ERA, and as you can see, he's had a great first half as he leads the AL in that department. At the plate, Rex Benitez. He singled his last time up. Rex Okay, still two outs, bottom of the fifth. On its way. This should end the inning as it's right over to DJ LeMahieu. Gets it over to Jose Abreu to get us out of here. Nice pick out of the dirt. Thus far, but we've got a tight game through five. More of the show Saturday baseball after this. All right. So Boston must have done something on those two hits we just gained. Two-run home run, perhaps? Over two on his line thus far. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. And that one just missed outside. Right guy, right spot. Come on now, kid. Yoan Moncada, for, the, for uh, all his hype here and all the 
expectations of him being a great player. Uh, career so far, one walk or a hit by pitch, perhaps. Hey, if this guy's able to execute that two seamer down and away consistently, he's going to get a lot of swing and misses. He's going to get a lot of weak contact. He might even get a few knots on some people's shins. The one one. I'm just looking to get some outs, Six man. Below the knees, taken for a ball. If I saw off bats, if I get little dribblers, if I get strikeouts, pop flies, I will take anything. Now the 2 1. The principle I've been trying to hold to and this will be in getting into away. this game has been rather than adhere to the philosophy that whatever gets you. Here now the 2 2. You know, whatever and another makes your ball. traditional numbers better is automatically the best thing to do. I am far more interested in just getting outs. All of your statistics are based on how many innings you pitch without allowing runs and such, fouled away. including war. And so that's the best thing you can do is just refuse to allow runs. He spoils a hmm. one. Yohan Moncada batting up a storm here. Bottom of the sixth. We're at 64 pitches. Well, let's see how he likes one outside. Swing and a miss. So long as he's finally set down here after an eight pitch at bat. Man, they really well, he did his job in making so me throw a lot of pitches series. here, but That's his fifth strikeout in this series alone. If you continue to foul stuff like that off, you are leaving yourself open to something like that, my friend. Standing in now, Tim Anderson. As he will take strike okay, one nice the on the black. No nice strike. pitch. Oh, for two for him to this point. Next call is for another fastball. Same spot, effectively. I'm going to put it a little more inside. Here's the old Try to get it off the plate. This is that's not left. so much, but that's but straight out to left right field. The left fielder as he where Gustavo Marquez is waiting. So he's just a third of an inning away from putting up another zero as we take a look at the ball clubs with the lowest team ERAs. And you can see right there that these guys rank second in the AL in that category. And once again, this is j a lot of this is due to Jason because he is the AL leader in innings pitched. When you pitch a lot of innings without allowing a lot of runs, that really drives your ERA down. I realize that that's a tautology because ERA is just earned runs times nine divided by innings pitched. But, uh, you know, it's, it's true because all the other pit, you know, the more innings Jason pitches without allowing scores, the lower his ERA and the more innings he uh, contributes and the more the fewer runs that he contributes right to the team the ERA. Fastball that he takes for a strike. This guy's pitching really well in this one so far. You could just see he's awful confident attacking the strike zone, and when he comes off the mound at the end of the inning, looks like he stepped in a big old bucket of sassy. This is pulled into right. Sassy. And Jason Parham's hair care product and apparently foot and care product of choice. One, two, three, go the white I mean, shot. for all we know, he's like a hobbit. He's got a lot of hair under those uh, cleats. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just saying, you know, have you ever seen Jason Parham barefoot? Next up is the sneaky pop of Nicky Delmonico. He doubled earlier and carries a two for two line into this appearance. Okay, we're going into the seventh. It's still two to one. The back end of this game, only down by one. Still real tight. Get this leadoff guy and extra base hit away from. Nice clobber shot, but uh, that is Barney Saltzman out there in the center, picking it up like flypaper. One pitch, one out. Absolute bullet to the outfield that gets caught, and he would have represented the tying run. Stepping in now. Trying to slide her first pitch for Jordan Luplo. Not ideal, but it falls foul. A hit in two at bats for him at this point in the ballgame. Yeah, I hung that one yet again. 
try something a little more conservative this time. In the dirt as he lays off, it's one and one. Slider again is the call. Guess we'll try it. Ground ball. Grounder over to two way Lynn. Gets it over to first. Ooh, wow. Jose Abreu has to stretch all the way out to pull that one in, but he makes the play. Stepping in, Ray Ramiro. He comes in 0 for 2 thus far. Jose Abreu, of course, is a former White Sox himself. I can't First look up his in-universe history right now, but he, uh, the inside corner that time, but he is one. 31 in this universe, in our universe now at uh, the beginning of 2019, which means that he is probably closer to 34 or 35 by 2022. And probably close to the end, closer to the end of his career than the one beginning of the it. But at now. the same time, you know, he is still coming out, putting up good numbers, contributing strongly the to the, the team. Duel, two to one, our score. Oh, I don't like that pitch. Look no out! On that one. Didn't quite bean you, but that was a curveball right towards your in midsection. Little grounder for Tsue Lin. I think he's going to get it. Yes, indeed. Bounce it off the dirt. But Jose Obreu picks it up and makes the play. They're down 2 1. And that is seven innings. So we got to ask ourselves are they going to leave us out here again? I think we all know the answer to that. Obviously, we all knew the wrong answer because they're putting Tyler Thornburg out on the mound after seven innings of Jason. And that's probably the right call to make. But we will find out if they can hang on for six more outs in this one-run lead. Survey says... Well, they had to put in a couple of extra innings of work, but hey, listen, a win is a win, and any win is good, especially on the road. Four to two, the final score today. Pablo Palmero gets the win in relief, his second of the year. Tony Zitch closes the door for the save, his 27th of the campaign. So that'll just about do it for Mark DeRosa, Dan please. So they give up a run in the eighth to deny Jason the win, but he still pitches seven innings, allowing one run on six hits and collecting eight strikeouts. His ERA is down to 2.00, his FIP is at 2.06, and his XFIP is at 2.65. So that's going to do it for me. Until next time, I'm Tyrant Saber, and I will see you at the ballpark.